Uncle Jess here. I do a lot of 3D printing with filament-based 3D printers like the Elgu Neptune 2S here. And one of the biggest questions I get from you all is what materials do I recommend using for gluing your 3D printed parts together? So today we are gonna do just that. We're gonna get to the bottom of this and figure out which of the application options best suits your needs for the projects that you're working on. And I needed a way to run off and test all of these, so I went into Tinkercad and designed a very basic file that I could actually run off and 3D print on my Neptune 2S and some PLA. And since I do a lot of cosplay 3D printing, a lot of times the designers of those files will include little nooks or crevices where other 3D printed pieces or add-ons could be inserted to add some additional stability to those printed parts. So I'm also doing that here with these files so that we can glue all of these in and see how reliably everything holds together. So the first one that we're gonna look at testing is just some very basic super glue. And this is stuff that you can commonly find at most hardware stores or your local, uh, basically, grocery stores. This is just the Loctite super glue. This is one that I typically use for a lot of my Etsy orders when it comes to gluing parts together. Now, one other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, gonna put some more super glue here on the other opening so that when we put this together, we've basically got some glue along all of the seams there. One other thing that you can do as well is if you want to, basically this is some spray on material that's gonna help speed up the process of the actual super glue welding together. So here we can insert this in place. Now these two pieces are pretty well secured together. And I'm sure if I put a little bit of force on them, it's still holding up relatively well. Where this comes in as a best use case with super glue is if you're putting together, let's say, some model parts or small intricate pieces where you still need to maintain some of the detail and the cleanliness of your 3D print, super glue can be a great option for you. Again, it's not gonna hold up, or if you have really large pieces that you need to secure together, super glue is more than likely not gonna be that great for you because if you drop these, It's gonna definitely weaken the process and that didn't even actually break, which is fantastic to see. But if I apply a bit of pressure, wow, look at that, holy cow. These are, yeah, it's coming apart there at the seam with just a little bit of pressure. But overall, I'm very impressed with how that turned out and would, uh, again, be something that I would recommend for smaller parts, detailed parts that you wanna maintain a clean look to. Now, the next one we're gonna try is using some UV resin that you typically use for your resin 3D printer. So I'm taking some of this Elgu uh, leftover resin that I have here, I poured it into the cap, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take some and run it along the edge here with a brush. Make sure you're using gloves, working in a ventilated area here. And then I can press these two together. And then this is where the real magic comes into play is using a UV light to actually weld these together. So here, I'm gonna use this UV light and it's gonna cure the resin and in theory should allow you to cure the two printed parts together. Uh, this should work similar to working with super glue. I am very skeptical of how strong this will be because it's not like you're curing resin against resin, it's resin against a printed part and hopefully it's got enough texture for it to grip against. All right, I let this cure under UV light for about two minutes and I, I don't have high expectations for this one here. So let's see, yeah, that immediately. <laughs> I mean, as expected, that was not gonna work very well. I would really not recommend this at all using resin to weld your 3D printed PLA pieces together. Resin welding against resin works really nicely, especially if you're using the exact same resin, but against PLA printed parts, not so good. Resin, again, can work really well for smoothing out your 3D prints, and I made a separate video on that a year ago. You can find that up in the corner here if you haven't already seen it but I would definitely not use it for actually welding or attempting to join two printed parts together that are printed in filament. Yeah, not a good idea. So the next one we're gonna attempt to do is welding using a 3D printable pen. So if you're not familiar with these, they were kind of a hot thing a handful of years ago. You can find them over on Amazon for pretty cheap. This is a, 
an unnamed brand here. I have no idea which one this is that I must have got for about 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks off of Amazon a few years back. I'm not even sure how much they cost now. I'm gonna install the little inserts here and how this is gonna work is I'm gonna put the two PLA pieces together and then using the pen, plus some filament, I'm gonna melt filament into the seam here so that it actually joins two plastic filament pieces together. This more or less will, depending on how hot that tip is as well, will also melt some of the filament together along with merging it there. I'll do the other side now. Now this is honestly a great option if you have a 3D printed pen on hand and wanted to weld your printed parts together. This is, feels very, very durable. However, the downside is you're gonna end up with some gunk on one side of your print, especially if it's an exterior facing that you're wanting to display. This might not be a very good option for you. But if you have one side that you're never gonna see or people are very unlikely to see, you could always just work on welding that one end with the filament. The other thing is now that this is just cooled for a few seconds there, it's not peeling off or anything like that. I could try and sand this down with a Dremel or sanding bit or something along those lines to help smooth out the seam as well, but it is helping it weld these two printed parts together by just using more filament. The one other really big benefit of using a 3D printed pen is if you have some large gaps that you're looking to fill, maybe your prints didn't perfectly lay level when they printed and you have an offset on one corner, you could use this to help build up that seam versus using something like wood filler or some other product. I mean, this is, this is holding together really nicely. It doesn't even feel like it's coming loose. There we go. I had to put a lot of force behind it to actually break the printed parts together. This uh, honestly would probably work a good bit better than you're, you're using super glue or maybe even in the combination of super glue plus this isn't a bad idea. The next one we're gonna look at is just melting the filament together by using a wood burner or an old soldering iron. Now keep in mind, this tip is gonna be extremely hot and you don't wanna touch it. And if you're using a wood burner, a lot of times they come with different tip options for you to work with. So here I've got a flat one that I'm just gonna use to press along the seam to actually weld the two printed parts together. If you wanted to really enhance the bonding of this, you could even make little X patterns in this, which is gonna really help merge the two plastic pieces together. You'll also notice that there is smoke coming off of this, so you're gonna be wanting to make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area when using something like this. Uh, additionally, once you've gone through this, if you have any high spots, you can use the flat edge of this to try and smooth out some of that plastic there. Using one of these is honestly one of the best options that's out there if you don't mind the mess that it can make or the damage that it can do to your parts. Again, if you have one side that you don't mind screwing up that isn't necessarily front facing or if you're already gonna be planning on smoothing out and sanding down your prints, this is a great viable option for you and you can pick these up for really cheap over at Harbor Freight or over on Amazon as well if you want one that you're just gonna use as a dedicated tool for welding prints together. This is very scientific testing. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Oh. oh, holy cow. All right, I had to put a lot of force behind that to break that bond. So this is, if you're looking for something extremely durable, this is a great solution for you. Now, 3D Gloop is easily one of my favorite options. It's made an appearance in a bunch of my videos. I've made some TikToks using it as well. Uh, it's just a fantastic product that basically chemically weld your printed parts together. And it, this one's specifically designed for PLA, but they have some for PETG and I believe ABS as well. They come in a variety of different sizes. Uh, it's just a fantastic product that I love using. So let's try it out and see how it fares against the others. This is the one tricky thing. I probably should have some better tools like a toothpick or a smaller brush to brush this on here. So let's put these two together. Give it a little squeeze and let it sit for just a minute or two. 
All right, so this has been sitting here for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and it's pretty well cured together. This stuff works pretty fast once you start adhering pieces together. It'll immediately start uh, just solidifying and welding the two pieces together. So it is nice and smooth as well. Uh, it's very, very similar to what you might get from the results from super glue. It's a little bit harder to control since you do have to brush this on with some sort of an applicator, but you could use a toothpick or something along those lines and it is a good bit thicker in consistency than what you see with super glue so let's give this a few drops here and see how this goes i mean i i have pretty pretty high hopes for this one here that it's <laughs> i've worked with it a bunch so I, i'm not anticipating this to break at all so let's see <laughs> hold on <laughs> i'll get it i'll get it there we go <laughs> that one took a lot of pressure, look at this. This one side, it really has more or less cohesively combined together the two parts. And I did have to just snap that in half with brute force. So another great option if you want something that's gonna have a really strong hold, uh, has a relatively clean finish and should allow you to paint and sand it smooth. Now it's time for the plastic welding gun. Again, I, I was so excited to actually just go ahead and order one of these and see how it went. I think this was a $40 kit that I bought off of Amazon that came with the welding gun. Uh, it has a different tool attachment here that looks like I could potentially just use this to heat this up and use it at, instead of the wood burner or an old soldering iron because it has this, this flat tip that looks like it's specifically designed for it. There is a... Uh, a nice utility knife. It also comes with some snippers here so that I can snip away at some of those staples. So that it has a whole bunch of different types of staples that it's gonna allow me to heat up and press into the plastic. So this should be really fun to test out. And please keep in mind, I've never worked with one of these before. I literally bought this specifically so I could make this video. It's just a nice excuse to buy a new tool. By the way, it also, uh, it also came with these safety gloves that I should probably be wearing. Oh my gosh, this is really fun. <laughs> I don't know how well this is gonna work, but it might be the most fun way for me to weld parts together. For sure, if you're planning on using one of these, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a window open, some fans running, etc., because this does let off some fumes as it's melting the filament that you've printed here. So you don't wanna be breathing that in. This thing also heats up crazy fast within like seconds after you pull the trigger and you've got your staple in there. Uh, once you've placed it in, so the first few times I didn't leave it in there. So you gotta put it in there, uh, leave it in, and obviously with your finger off the trigger because the staple is gonna be hot, but you need to let it cool off for just a second or two, then you can take it out. And they also included these snippers here, so we should be able to snip away at the metal staples. That's probably gonna be the biggest downside to these is getting those as flush as possible to the 3D print. Yeah, that, that's definitely gonna be the biggest issue that I'm gonna run into when trying to use these is that there. You can also uh, alternatively just push those pins down as well and they'll get relatively flat but again, this is not gonna be great for anything that you're looking to have as a uh, finished surface piece here unless you can find a way to grind down those little points here. But this does seem to provide a really strong bond, at least in the areas that you've clipped it. So I watched a few quick videos on how I'm supposed to properly use this. And yeah, I was orienting those staples entirely in the wrong direction. This is a much more <laughs> strong bond here with these parts. Uh, I've got this fully aligned here with five of the staples. I haven't even done the back half yet, but can already tell that it is way stronger than the first go around of this. <laughs> this might be the best option, but still it's gonna be those staples and getting those removed and flattened out that's gonna be the biggest issue that you're gonna run into when working with this. I did wanna take a moment to say a big thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video, the makers of the Elgu Neptune 2, which is my go-to FDM 3D printer. I recently did a video where I was showing off my print farm of Neptune 2 S 3D printers. I absolutely love this thing. I use it for all of my Etsy jobs. It's such a fantastic machine, especially if you're looking to get started with 3D printing and haven't before. This is a great machine to get up and running with. It takes literally, I don't know, 15 minutes to get assembled and it just prints 
amazing. And Elgu also makes some amazing resin 3D printers that I'm sure you've seen me use here in the past. I want to say a big thank you again to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. So this was a really fun exercise for me to throw down and see what the results were gonna be like. Even though I've already have a good bit of experience using some of those tools, it was nice to have this all cohesively here for you all because not every one of these is gonna be perfect for every situation or every project that you're working on. And like I mentioned before, things like super glue, it's not the most durable when it comes to bonding printed parts together. However, in some cases, it's the right tool for the job because you need something that's gonna be small, you're not gonna notice it, and you just need a little bit of a bond there. You don't need it to be permanently welded together. But if you do need to have your prints permanently adhere together, as much as I would like to recommend the plastic welding gun, it was really fun to use. However, I think the cleanup is gonna be more troublesome than it's worth. Uh, if you wanna try it out, I'll have links to the kit that I bought. It's definitely fun to use. And if I have some really big printing projects, I might end up using that. So stay tuned, we'll see if I end up using it. But still, my go-to is gonna end up being 3D Gloop. I just use this all of the time. It works so well when it comes to PLA. Also, if you wanted to get really creative, you could even use the soldering iron or wood burner plus 3D Gloop to give it an extra strong hold. And I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in my resin 3D printer settings or just hearing about what I'm working on behind the scenes, you can find out more about that in my Patreon. And let me know down below what your favorite way of combining multiple 3D printed parts together is. I might have missed one or two things, but hopefully covered the majority of them here. But thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.